Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Today we're going to look at managing a more complex genetic problem. We're going to look at ALS projects or acts like super or allelic complexes and in particular we're going to look at uh, freeways and highways. I was contacted last week by Yankee Reptiles, Andrew at Yankee Reptiles. Uh, details below, you can follow him on Facebook and he was asking about uh, a freeway project and uh, some of the snakes in his collection and directions that he should go and he was originally looking for just some feedback on what genes to add to that project but it quickly became apparent that um, this would be a really nice collaboration since he's just starting out on his freeway journey and I have an asphalt in my collection uh, plus a highway and I'm just starting out uh, in my projects with these genes as well um, I thought it'd be really nice if we could do a collaboration. The shy guy here is my pastel highway which is yellow belly and gravel so I do have a highway project myself that needs some thinking about uh, so some of the genetic permutations that we're going to take a look at are going to be useful for me too in planning my own projects. So this is pastel highway or yellow belly gravel and this guy here is my own asphalt project so I've got a little male asphalt who also is het for pied and het for clown uh, so even more of a complex problem here in that I've got the uh, allelic complex of asphalt and yellow belly to play with which is the freeway and it's also het for two recessives pied and clown so um, this is going to be one to watch for the future. I do have some plans for this guy uh, But this is an even more complicated genetic problem than just the straight Allelic or acts like super complex of the freeway. So again, I do have projects of my own that are going along the freeway route So this is asphalt Het for pied, het for clown and it's a little male so Here's Andrew. Hey guys, it's Andrew from Yankee Reptiles. Uh, hope everybody's safe out there and doing their best to enjoy their quarantine. Uh, for a lot of us breeders, it's actually, it's actually not a bad time for it considering some of us are waking up to clutches of eggs in the morning or seeing some ovulation. So at least we're, some of us would be able to keep busy, you know. You know it's a good time to plan out some projects, um, especially long-term ones. Um, just wanted to take a minute and introduce myself and uh, thank Rob for agreeing to do this collaboration with me on my freeway project, which you guys are going to see step by step along the way. Um, Rob's a great teacher. I uh, love his videos and reached out to him about this. Just uh, Most breeders know if you're going for something long term that involves a lot of genes, um, you, it's wise to bring in somebody else uh, just because you might not see the whole picture you know so it helps get things into focus and um, Rob's great at teaching and he knows a heck of a lot more than me and that's not to say that he doesn't have a lot to learn we all do but uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoy this uh, this journey with us uh, hopefully it's gonna be a lot of fun for you you guys can learn a little bit of something we will too um, just wanted to do a few shout outs I love what you guys are doing a race of reptiles there Olympus reptiles great and uh, Ron down in Puerto Rico for BBM Reptiles. Uh, just wanted to let you know my thoughts are with you. Uh, we haven't forgotten you, buddy. Uh, really sorry about your loss, man. All right, but I'm going to toss it over to Rob, and uh, you guys take care. Okay guys, let's kick this off with taking a step back from the natural snakes themselves and just have a look at our genetic calculator to uh, look at some of the genetic problems that we might face. Um, we'll start off with breeding a freeway to a freeway. So um, we've got the male and we have the female and we're going to use yellow for yellow belly and red for asphalt so you can see that for any particular snake that is a freeway we have one copy of asphalt 
and one copy of Yellow Belly occupying the same address on the genetic material. So when this snake breeds, we only need half the genetic material from each parent to make the new snake. So the genetic material is split in half. Half of it is going to contain the asphalt gene and half of it is going to contain the yellow belly gene. And the same for the other parent. So when we split the genetic material, we're going to give half the offspring asphalt and half the offspring yellow belly. And that's the same for any allelic or acts like super combinations. We know that we can't get a normal from the pairing because you get one or the other of the genes involved. And we also can't reproduce the parents because you're only getting one copy of each gene. The other parent must also contain the genes in order to be able to produce another freeway. So this is freeway to freeway, which is asphalt and yellow belly. It also applies equally well to highways, which is gravel. Uh, so the asphalt or the gravel here in this example is interchangeable. So what happens when we breed a freeway to a freeway? Genetic material is split in half. This is the dad, this is the mum. Half the genetic material is supplied by each of the parents. We can take this half of the male and pair it to this half of the female, which gives us one copy of yellow belly and one copy of asphalt, which is another freeway. Or we can breed it to this half of the female, which is yellow belly and yellow belly, which gives us a super yellow belly or ivory. We take the other half of the male, which contains asphalt, breed it to this half of the female, and that gives us asphalt and asphalt, which is a super asphalt, two copies of the asphalt gene. Or we take this half of the male and use this half of the female, and now we get asphalt and yellow belly again. Okay, so on our Punnett square, the outcome that we're getting is two out of four squares contain yellow belly asphalt. So we're going to get two out of four, or 50% of the offspring, will be freeways. One square is super yellow belly or ivory, and one square is super asphalt. So unlike when we breed a visual recessive to a visual recessive and all the babies come out as visual recessives, when we breed an ALS to an ALS, a freeway to a freeway, only 50% of the babies come out as freeways. And in this example we also get one ivory and one super asphalt. The super asphalt and the ivory are obviously very, very distinctive snakes. This is a white snake and this is a really brightly coloured uh, super form of asphalt. So they're very easy to tell apart. You can tell the freeway from the super asphalt, from the ivory. So we at least can tell what we have in the offspring. And it's a, it's a good outcome because we're getting two freeways, which is our desired outcome. We're getting super asphalt and ivories, which are also very marketable. If we don't want to keep them in our project, we can sell them. All of these snakes are extremely marketable. So that's a very, very good outcome from a self-sustaining point of view, because you can sell all the offspring and just keep the ones that you want. And you know exactly what you have in the genetic makeup of the snakes from their visual appearance. So good outcome, except can anybody see what the problem is with this outcome? The answer to that is that we cannot get any additional genes into the project via this route. If you breed a freeway to a freeway, it could be a freeway leopard, it could be a freeway enchi, but those are the genes that are going to be involved in the offspring. You cannot add anything. And if you're trying to get a freeway enchi, there's very little point in breeding a freeway NG because you already have one, you bought it. Uh, so we're assuming that we've got two straight free freeways with no other genes involved and we're going to try to add them to the project. This is not the way to do it. Exactly the same as when you're dealing with recessives and you have two visual recessives, you must create the hets in order to be able to 
add those genes to the project. And it's the same with ALS complexes. You can't breed a visual freeway to a visual freeway and add any genes. You must buy either an asphalt or a yellow belly that has the additional genes and breed that back to either a visual freeway or if you have a yellow belly with the genes in, breed it to an asphalt. So let's have a look at those genetic examples. Okay, so what we've done here is we have a freeway male in the project and we went out and bought a yellow belly and it's a yellow belly combo, it has the other genes involved and we don't need to model those because we know the other genes involved it's going to be 50-50 whether they are passed on and whether they're not. Uh, you've seen that in my previous genetic calculations. So let's just have a look at what happens when you breed a freeway to a yellow belly. Here's the female, which is a yellow belly, and here's the male, which is a freeway. So we take this half of the male and breed it to this half of the female. One copy of asphalt. We take this half of the male and breed it to this half of the female. And we're now getting a copy of yellow belly and asphalt. So that's a freeway. We're producing a freeway from that. We take this half of the male, which contains the yellow belly gene, and breed it to that half of the female that has one copy of yellow belly no copies of anything from the female the other outcome is yellow belly to yellow belly that so that gives us an ivory so this is the genetic outcome when we breed a freeway to a yellow belly that contains the other genes that we need into the project and I'm assuming that we have been successful and some of the babies do contain that additional gene. But now you can see we have a problem. Well, we've got one freeway that may or may not contain the, the genes that we want to add, uh, which is a good outcome. We have an ivory, uh, which is a valuable snake. We can, we can sell that, but we don't know what additional genes we're selling along with it because they'll be hidden inside the ivory. And two out of four of the offspring are going to be either asphalt or yellow belly. And the problem with asphalt and yellow belly, or indeed gravel and yellow belly, is that you can't tell them apart. So these two guys here, one of them is asphalt, one of them is yellow belly, and you probably don't know which is which. So how do you know in terms of your project? Let's say that of all these babies here, only these two guys here, because of the odds involved, these two guys here contain the extra codominant genes that we wanted to add. Uh, they didn't show up in the visual freeway, they only show up in the asphalt or yellow belly. So we pick this guy because he's got the additional gene that we want. But now, because he is either asphalt or yellow belly and we don't know how do we know how what to breed it to well depending upon whether it's a male or a female if it's a female you can only breed one male to it and you might get it wrong uh, you might put gravel to gravel you might put yellow belly to yellow belly and you're not going to get your freeways um, and that is introducing uncertainty into the project we don't know what the offspring are we don't know whether to keep them we don't know whether to sell them, we don't know what to breed back to them unless we try it twice because we might get it wrong the first time. Let's have a look and see what happens when we breed a yellow belly to an asphalt. So here's our asphalt and here's our yellow belly and we've seen this before. This is just a simple recombining of codominant genes so it's a 50-50 chance of the gene being passed on from either parent. So it's this to this which is no genes this to this which is yellow belly or it's this to this which is asphalt or this to this which gives us a freeway, a visual freeway. Now this outcome is exactly the same as for a recessive gene when you breed het to het and effectively your asphalt is a het freeway and your yellow belly is a het freeway. When you recombine them, one in four is a visual freeway. Two out of three contain the asphalt or the yellow belly gene, and one of the four 
is a normal. Normals we can generally differentiate between the asphalt or gravel and the yellow belly but the asphalt and the yellow belly we can't tell them apart so here again we have exactly the same problem that we have produced our freeway and we may have got the additional gene into this visual freeway that we needed in the project but there's an equal chance that we didn't and that those genes are actually contained in these two guys here and again we have the same problem we don't know whether it's asphalt we don't know whether it's yellow belly so we don't know what to pair it to and we may get it wrong which increases our probability of failure and increases the amount of time it takes to arrive at our desired goal so what's the solution to that issue the solution to that problem is to use a super form as one of the parents if one of the parents is the super form you know that all the offspring are going to carry one copy of asphalt or in the case of the highway project one copy of gravel so if we use a super asphalt we need to use a yellow belly as the other parent so we're going to do a super form to a het effectively so what happens there well you breed the asphalt to this half of the female and you get one copy of asphalt nothing from the female you breed this to the yellow belly and you get your freeway or your highway if you're working the highway project or you take this half of the male breed it to this half of the female and you get asphalt or gravel in the case of highways or you breed it to this half of the female and you get another freeway or another highway in the case of the highway project so by using a super form you will now see that you have exactly the same outcome as you had by breeding two freeways together your super form and a het or the super asphalt to the yellow belly gives you exactly the same number of freeways as breeding a freeway to a freeway but now you have a not only do you have a route for introducing new genes in your yellow belly but the two out of four offspring that are not freeways have to be asphalt there is no doubt from the genetic pairing that these two offspring have to be asphalt or in the case of the highway these have to be gravel and now if these are the ones that are containing the extra genes that we need in our project we're in no doubt about what to pair them to we need to pair them back to a yellow belly in order to get the genetic combination we need in our freeway so we've removed uncertainty by using a super asphalt or a super gravel in the case of the highway project now why did I choose to use a super asphalt instead of a super yellow belly the super yellow belly to a single copy of asphalt will give exactly the same result it will give exactly the same two out of four so here we are we're going to use a super yellow belly or ivory and we're going to pair it to an asphalt all that happens now is that we get two freeways and two yellow bellies we've removed the uncertainty in this combination too because these have to be yellow belly given that pairing the problem with doing that is that asphalts are more valuable than yellow bellies if you look on morph market you will see the vast majority of asphalt or yellow belly is sold as yellow belly or asphalt they're never sold as asphalt they're never sold as yellow belly they're sold as yellow belly asphalt so you just do not know what that combination is so in our project what we actually need in order to remove the uncertainty in the project we need a male super asphalt or a male super gravel the reason we need a male is because we can have a bunch of yellow belly females and we can breed this super to each of the females and produce from the offspring a known outcome all the offspring are going to be freeways or asphalts or in the case of the highway project 
gravels. We're going to get no yellow bellies, so we know what to pair back to these offspring if these are the ones that contain the extra genes. So the way forward in this project is to have a super asphalt or a super gravel male and then to buy in because the cheapest option on morph market is to buy a yellow belly combination. So buy yellow belly females with the additional genes that you need pair every single one of them to your super asphalt males and you will get this outcome. You will get Two, free, two out of four freeways and two out of four asphalts. And because you know they're asphalts, there's no uncertainty, they're just as valuable in your project. So that's the uh, genetic calculation part of the deal. Um, it should be obvious by now that dealing with complex genetic projects requires you to think uh, two, three, four moves in advance. It's almost like a chess game. The calculations that we've seen on the video are not very hard. I do them in my head because I've done them so many times and trust me by the end of this uh, project Andrew will also be doing them in his head. Uh, you are automatically thinking two or three jumps ahead uh, when you're thinking about the genetic outcomes of any particular pairing. Why do you need to learn these calculations? Uh, there are genetic calculators on uh, Morph Market, on uh, World of Ball Pythons and they will tell you the genetic outcomes of any particular pairing. And I see it all the time, guys. I see people uh, using Morph Market and they hold their hand phone up to the camera and say, see, see, this is a fantastic outcome. And I do feel that whilst Morph Market, uh, the genetic calculators are a great tool and I encourage everybody to use them, um, it also stops you from thinking. Somebody's doing the calculations for you. If you don't understand how the calculations are derived, you also cannot think two or three moves ahead. So there we go guys, just a note of caution on the genetic calculator. Uh, yes, it gives you the right answer, uh, but it doesn't think two or three moves ahead for you and it will not plan your strategy in your projects. I've often heard it said that the top breeders in the world, the guys that are producing world's first and some of the coolest looking snakes, seem to have an eye for knowing what genes mix with what and that's how they produce these fantastic snakes. Um, yes that's true uh, but these guys also have it in their head the genetic calculations that I've just run through with you and they are particularly good at identifying what pairings they need to make with what in order to increase the probability of success and decrease the byproduct of a whole bunch of snakes that they don't need to further their projects. Okay guys, that's part one with all the uh, genetic stuff uh, taken care of. I think the way forward is uh, fairly obvious and uh, Andrew over at Yankee Reptiles agreed uh, with his base of those three yellow belly females, one of which is Calico, plus the asphalt male. Um, he's already made the decision to reserve a super asphalt male for his project. Um, he'll be purchasing that uh, as soon as it becomes available. Um, they are not cheap uh, but he should get uh, a return on his investment very very quickly in the first few clutches as I think is apparent from the genetic calculations. So his first move in his project is to buy the super asphalt male 
He's now in the process of shopping for yellow belly females with the genes that he needs to add to the project and we'll follow that as he acquires these snakes and we look at some of the uh, genetic permutations that are available to him as we go into part two. And there's also an interesting side effect from buying the uh, super asphalt male as well, which we'll take a look at in part two. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.